والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم Bismillah, alhamdulillah, and welcome to this episode of Beauties of Islam. I'm Yusuf Estes, and for the next few minutes I would like to really talk about one of, if not the very most important, of all the aspects, of all the facets, of all the beauties of Islam, Allah. Who is Allah? Where is Allah? And can we prove it? What is the proof? And in this episode, that's one of the aspects I want to talk about, the proof of Allah. And I recall that when I was first introduced to Islam, the person that I was talking to was a Muslim, of course, and I was trying to call him to my religion in Christianity. He was telling me of some of the aspects of Islam, what you must do, what the requirements are, what the beliefs are. And he saw that I was also concerned about my beliefs as a Christian at that time. And so he said to me, Islam teaches us to always go to what is better. Whatever you have that's better, you should always move toward that. So I'm ready, as a matter of fact, to go to your religion of Christianity if it's better than my religion of Islam. And I thought to myself, hey, I got this guy. This is going to be easy because he's been telling me about the pillars of Islam which require that you must establish something called Salah and pray five times a day. You must fast the months of Ramadan, 30 days non-stop, no food, no drink during the daytime. And then you have to do something called Hajj. And you have to go all the way to Mecca and you have to do a pilgrimage dressed in two towels and so and so and so many things, you know, and I'm thinking, mm. And plus what you can't do, you can't drink alcohol, you can't eat pork, you can't uh, have a girlfriend, you can't sit around, you know, wasting time listening to music, crazy stuff. So as far as I was concerned, I had a better religion than he did. And I was beginning to explain that to him. And then he said, listen again, he said, I will go to your religion if it's better than my religion. But you have to have proof. <clears throat> now, I thought about this for a minute, I said, wait a minute, <laughs> proof? What are you talking about? Proof. Religion is not about proof. As a matter of fact, religion is about faith. He said in Islam, you see, we do have faith, of course, but we have proof to back it up. We can prove everything in Islam. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are you going to tell me, and this is what I said to him, you're going to sit there and tell me, as a Muslim, you can prove there's God? Then he said to me, you mean to sit there and tell me, as a preacher for Christianity, that you can't? Ugh. I had to think about that for a minute. <laughs> well, there is no proof God exists. He said, really? I said, no. He said, so now, does your religion teach you to go what is better? I said, well, yeah, well of course, you know, we would go to whatever is best. He said, what about proof? If you see proof, do you go to the proof? Or do you hold on to concepts that you have had, you know, passed on for generations? Things that other people say without proof. Do you go to what is testable evidence? Yeah. I said, well, explain what you have. He said, in Islam, we can prove God exists without a doubt, number one. Number two, we have the proof of what our purpose is in life. And number three, we can know without a doubt how to do what it is God wants us to do, how to do God's will on earth. Well, that statement alone was enough to get me thinking because that is a teaching from the New Testament of the Bible. It's a prayer, actually, called the Lord's Prayer that Christians pray all the time asking for God's will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. All right, tell me more, I say. Tell me, I'd like to know. He said, okay, first of all, we as Muslims totally accept that God exists without any doubt. But it's not just because somebody said so, not just because scripture says so, but because we have testable evidence that we can use our minds, our aql, our thinking, our logic to conclude that in fact God does exist and he exists according to the way that it's explained in the Quran, his speech to us. 
And I'm going, okay, give me an example. He said, well, first of all, when you think about the heavens, look to the heavens, what do you see? I said, well, the sun. He said, what about at night? I said, well, maybe the moon, of course, the stars, unless it's cloudy. He said, so sun, moon, clouds. Yeah. He said, and what are they like? So what do you mean? He said, what are they shaped like? I said, they're round balls. And what do they do? Well, what do you mean, what do they do? He said, describe the motion. I said, well, these are circles or balls or spheres that are going in orbits, elliptical orbits, within orbits, and they're all moving together as a mass, and they're turning, winding. This is what they're doing. He said, when was this known to human beings? I said, what do you mean? I guess always. No, I'm not true. Actually, what we understand today about astronomy, what we understand today about the universe, has only really come out in the last hundred years or so. A lot of it developed in the last 500 years, the basis for what we know today, but the proofs and evidences, even of the content of the moon, what it's made up of, how it moves, and so on, has only really been known in the last hundred years or so. And as far as ever going out of the Earth's atmosphere, this has only been in the last 50 years or so that even as discussed as a serious topic. Well, okay, so, he said, but yet 1,400 years ago, this is something that we have in the Quran. I said, what? And that's when he began to open the Quran and show me some of the amazing statements that are made about the creation itself. And there are so many. And in our program here, the beauties of Islam. We've discussed a lot of those. But in this episode, I just want to focus on who is the law and what is the proof. 